you were born just a, a stone's throw away from here. So you up to have a little bit of a walk and we can go down memory lane a little bit? Yeah, definitely. Come on then, mate. I know this place plays a, a big part in your development now, but beforehand when you were stood outside of this wall, because you were born not too far from here, did you come and try and get a glimpse of players yourself? Yeah, whenever I was off school and maybe I'd drive past here with my mum and we'd see all the, the fans lining up outside, you think, oh, they must be training right now. So I'd always try and maybe like find something to stand on or find a crack on the wall, try and look through and see a couple of the players. But yeah, I did it quite often when I was a kid. And now you're on the other side and people are growing up admiring you and, and looking at your story. That must be mind-blowing for you, though. Yeah, it is, definitely. Uh, especially living so close, I think it means a little bit more to me personally because I think when I see some of the fans trying to look over the fence and that, I can, I can relate to it because that's what I did when I was a kid. So, yeah, it definitely means a lot. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you playing. Thanks. Thank you. How easy is all that to adapt to when you're being stopped in the streets? I know it's normality now, but did it take a while to get used to? Yeah, definitely at first because I think it was it was always me who was trying to get them. And if I ever got that chance, then I'd be sprinting, sprinting down the road trying to catch them and chasing the cars and everything, just trying to get a glimpse at them. So to, um, to maybe get an autograph or something signed by them was always something special to me. And hopefully to give that back to to little, little kids and, and fans, it, it definitely means a lot. We're in West Derby Village, only five minutes away from, from Melwood's ground, but this is where the dream all started for you. You grew up around here, didn't you? Yeah, everything was just local to this area. I think played football, made mates, school, friends, home. Everything was, was around this area. How satisfied would you say you were with, with the last 12 months, Trent? Um, more than satisfied, um, overwhelmed and overjoyed, I think. Really proud of what I've achieved, but I think I've said it before, the hard work definitely doesn't, doesn't stop now. It, it's only just beginning and hopefully I'll have many more moments like last season, this season and seasons to come. I know it's a hard question, but what about a highlight for you? I'd probably say Old Trafford, I think. It was just overall the whole occasion and um, obviously the manager having the trust, that was a big one. Um, family being so proud, the importance of the game as well and just everything about the game was, was excellent. Was there a moment you felt comfortable around some of those lads that you talked about before? I know that they've changed the personnel, but you know, they'd still be heroes of yours growing up as an academy player. Was there a moment you felt comfortable around them and you felt, you know what, I'm, I'm an equal with, with these boys now? No, I think you just, over the time, you just get more naturally involved with the, with the team and you, you can become yourself more around them and start to have banter and things like that and just express yourself more. And I think that, that helps because if you can express yourself off the pitch, then you can you can do it on the pitch, and you won't be afraid to ask for the ball and maybe ignore someone passing to someone because you want to try and do something. You, you just get a little bit more confidence on the pitch. Little Birdie tells me that you caught up with somebody over the summer that Liverpool fans will know very well for a word of advice. Tell us a bit more about who it was and, and why you met him. I just went and had a, a bit of a chat with him, Gerard, and obviously his advice was really helpful because he's obviously an idol of mine and to have advice from him it means a lot because I obviously want to try and emulate his career path as much as I can. It just meant a lot to, to know that he's there to, to give me advice when I need it. And, um, yeah, I always thank him for the advice that he gives me. Whose idea was it for you to meet up with him? Um, it was his idea. I think Alex Inglethorpe as well thought it would be a, a good idea and I know that them two were talking about meeting, meeting up with me and discussing things and I think um, it was a good idea and I came away with a lot of good advice from him. You mentioned Alex Inglethorpe and a lot of the young lads do mention his influence in your path through to, to that first team pitch and the one thing that they always mention the coaches at the academy is, is how big an influence your mum has been 
in your career, keeping you on the straight and narrow, making sure your feet were always on the ground as well, right from a young boy right the way up to the first team. Yeah. How big has she been for you? Um, massive. Always there for me, no matter what. Always there to give me advice and maybe sometimes when I was getting a bit a bit loud and confident, she'd always put me back in my place and I think that's helped me go forward. Maybe at the time I wouldn't have been happy about it, but now that I look back on it, it definitely helped me going forward to be humble and to always strive for more. And it obviously just worked me mum. It was me, my whole family and friends. I think that's important, the people that you're around day in, day out, they, they help you become what you want to be. And all my family was, was always there for me. She's not going to let you move out anytime soon, is she? <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> I think I might have suggested it once to her and um, she killed that idea off straight away. <laughs> The contract comes so soon after the last one, though. What, what does that signal to you? A chance and faith from the manager once again. I think over the last 12 months, he showed many, many in many different ways the faith that he has in, in young players and um, in me um, personally. I'm just happy to have his faith and hopefully um, repay him by um, doing well when I get the chance. He obviously speaks to you quite a lot. What's the one bit of advice that sticks in your mind most if you replay conversations that you've had with him? He always knows what to tell me at the right times and what to work on and there's there's always stuff you need to improve on so there's not maybe one standout thing it's just I know personally and he's told me that I still need to improve in every aspect of my game it's it's normal I'm only 18 and I know I'm not at the highest level that I can achieve and I've still got a lot of potential and hopefully as a, as a team and as an individual I'll fulfill that potential. Is that sometimes the biggest change in mindset when you move from an academy to a first team setup? That it's not just all right to, to do well in training, you've got to aspire to be the best, just like Gerard, Stephen Gerard said he always did when he came up to Melwood. Yeah, definitely. You can't just be happy with being having a good session here and there or having a week's worth of good sessions and being happy with that. You've always got to try and be the best player in every session that you, you, you can. There's always someone who's trying to take your spot and there's a spot that I want to take as well. So you always got to fight and it's just natural. It's football, there's, um, there's always going to be competition and that's what's good with new signings and new players coming in. You always got to fight for your position because you don't know whether you're going to have it in the next few weeks and it's, it's difficult, but every day you got to try and work hard. You've had a, a taste of it now though, haven't you? You said it's before about the fight starts here, doesn't it really? This is where the hard work really begins for you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think you can never be satisfied with where you are. There's always room for improvement. And I think it's it's not a good thing if you ever are satisfied in football, you've always got to strive for better. And you can dwell on, on achievements for a little bit, but you can't dwell on them for months or weeks. you got to get back to the hard work. And that's what I'll do straight away. I'll get back into training and I'll work hard and I'll, tr I'll try and fight for a, for a place in the team. You're wearing the liver bird on your chest there, tell us what the club means to you. It means everything really. It's been there for as long as I can remember so it feels like part of I'm part of a family with Liverpool. It, everything, the fans, the team, the coach and the staff, everyone, it just feels like a family. That's the best way I can put it. We were spoiled, both of us, in different eras of growing up as, as Liverpool fans, but there's always been that, that scout element in the team, hasn't there? Do you feel any added pressure that, that people are desperate for you to do well because of where you're from as well? No, definitely not added pressure. I feel happy to, to be playing for my local team and to be fulfilling dreams of, of basically every kid in the city. It means a lot, just to, just to know that there's, there's a lot of people who want to be in my position and. I can't take it for granted, the, the position and the opportunity that I've been given. So every day I'm trying to do well, week in, week out, and, and um, hopefully that's what, that's what I do this season. Well, listen, we wish you all the best. And once again, Trent, absolutely brilliant. Well done on the new contract. Thank you.